Continuing our sermon series on rapping the classics, and we get to hear again from an amazing man of God, Pastor Brandon. He's going to bring the word, and I'm so stoked. The first service was really good. He had a lot of good points. Open your ears, open your hearts for the man of God, Pastor Brandon. Everybody give me a round of applause. Woo! temperature in this room will wake you up. <laughs> I'm a little chilly. A little chilly. Hi, I'm Brandon. Very nice to be back. Thank you for letting me come back. I appreciate it. Um, so I was talking to Shad and he was like, hey, we're doing uh, Unwrapping the Classics in, in the month of December. And, you know, would, would you help us out? Would you do another week? Yeah, definitely. What are we doing? Well, we got, you know, Frosty, the Grinch, Charlie. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Grinch? <laughs> Can I do that one? Can I, can I, can I do the Grinch? Yeah. I'm going to open that one. <laughs> so I'm going to do the Grinch. Uh, so he was like, sure, you can do the Grinch, I guess. You're going to pull on my you know, leg like that. Come on. So, you know, I love the Grinch. I, I, it's kind of a cop out. I feel like I'm kind of copping out because it's, it's my favorite. I think it's the best. And it's probably the easiest one to preach. So I get the easy message today. Uh, but. We're going to twist it a little bit and make it the hardest for Christians, because I like messing with Christians, that's kind of what I do. So, if, uh, yeah, you should have got a program, uh, as Pastor Mitchell was saying, when you walked in the door. The program's for a couple things. Uh, first of all, follow along, participate, participation, yeah, my favorite, participation, okay? Um, there should be some questions and stuff in there to, uh, to follow along with, which I believe I already answered one, so if you have not filled that in, please get with the program on your program. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, it'll also let you know how much long you have to listen to me, because we all know that you're like, look at the clock, how long is this guy going to be done? Okay, so that'll let you know uh, how much longer you have. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, so wait, as you're turning there. Um, this, uh, again, I like to mess with people, I like to mess with Christians in particular, because we make it so easy on ourselves uh, to, to pick on ourselves. Um, I am going to use we as Christians. Uh, this may not pertain to you. Uh, I hope it doesn't. Um, but I mean, there, there's... <laughs> that was kind of weird. Uh, there will be, you know, you'll get something out of it. Uh, but Christians uh, kind of give us a bad... They make us look bad. Some Christians make us look bad. So that's what I'm trying to say is... Hopefully that's, you're not one of them making me look bad, because then this message is definitely for you. <laughs> okay? So, Christians, uh, we like to talk a lot. We love to talk. Especially me, I like to talk. My wife loves when I talk. That's my wife, Amy, by the way. She loves when I talk. Um, so we talk a lot, but we have no action. We have no action. A lot of us Christians have no action. So we're going to go into 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to mess with your actions a little bit. Uh, this is the love boat. No. <laughs> It's love chapter. Love chapter. Uh, this is one of the most popular sections of scripture. People have it in their weddings. It's in plays and skits. People like memorize this section of scripture all the time. Which makes it even worse, I guess, because we don't live it. Uh, we memorize it, but we don't live it. So, we're going to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, and I'm reading from the NIV, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Now that sounds really annoying. A resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I don't want to be that. How many of you guys know somebody who's like that? Don't <laughs> nudge your neighbor. Do it. Yeah. Hey, you. Yeah, it's you. Okay. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. <clears throat> it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. For where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, 
What is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. But now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Wow. So we're doing Unwrapping the Classics. We are doing How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the classic one. Uh, great movie. I love it. I love it. So we're going to give away the classic Grinch movie. It's actually the deluxe edition, too. <laughs> so we're going to give it away. Now, Megan emailed me and said, hey, we're going to give away, you know, you get to give away uh, a movie, and you can do it however you want to. And for some reason, I came up with this weird idea. So we're going to do that. The first person that can raise their hand and, not just raise your hand, I'll try to cheat. Raise your hand and tell me all 12 days of Christmas. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. <laughs> 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords of leaping, 9 ladies dancing, 8 ways of milking, 7 storms of swimming, 6 geese of laying, 5 golden rings, 4 calling birds, 3 for infants, 2 for the doves, and a partridge of cherry trees. Wow!
In Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. The first thing is what not to do. 
What not to do is more fun. Okay? I like what not to do is because yeah, they're awesome. Okay? Do not have non-Christian unbelieving friends. I didn't finish. I was just testing. Do not have non-Christian unbelieving friends for the sole purpose of saving them. This is what people are telling Christians. I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. That is not a friendship. That is not a relationship. That is a shooting range. Yeah. That is a shooting range. Do not do that. Do not do that. Have friends. Have real relationships with people. Real relationships with people. That is how they will truly get to know you and what God has done in your life. And what God can do in theirs. Be real with them. Tell them your story. And, check this out. If your real friend decides never, never to go to church, we'll say this a different way. If God, for some reason, came down and told you, this friend that you have, this real friend that you have, will never go to church and will never accept me. What do you do? Oh, I'm going to unfriend them. It's not worth it. This is not Facebook. <laughs> this is not Facebook. You don't just go up and, not, I don't like their posts. You're blocked. You're done. You're out. You're not my friend anymore. That's, that is not real life. That is not real life. Stay their friend. There is, first of all, there's always hope because there's always Jesus. There's always hope. If you unfriend them, they were never really your friend. They were never really your friend, and let me tell you, it wasn't their fault. It was yours. It was not their fault. They are not a goal, an objective to hit and move on. Okay? That's where the shooting range comes in. They're not the target. Okay? So stop shooting them. They are people who you should actually care about. You should actually care about them. And this is where churches mess up. Where they mess up. They send people out for the kill. That doesn't sound church like to me. <laughs> okay? They send them out for the kill to bring them into church to shove religion down their throat. Okay? And they're always, you know, when you go for like evangelism training, outreach training, you know, you're like, well, teacher, you know, whoever's training me, what do I say? We'll ask them if they want to go to heaven. Now, to me, that's kind of a dumb question. Who wouldn't want to go to heaven? You're walking on gold. You tell that to anybody. You want to go walk on gold? Yeah, I'm down. Sign up for that. Who wouldn't want to go to heaven? There's no. I don't think anybody would not want to go to heaven. Nobody. Okay, but churches are always they're always about the end product. They're always about going to heaven. And I'm not trying to downplay heaven at all. Because I'm going to heaven, and I'm stoked. I'm excited. All right? But we always forget that Jesus is here with us right now. And he can do stuff in our life right now. We don't have to wait till heaven. Okay? He's here to give us abundant life right now. Okay? Sign me up for that. I want that. Okay? And that's, that's what we should be asking people. You want abundant life right now. And then, yeah, you're going to go to heaven too, which is a bonus. Right? Okay. Believers before us have created a roadblock. They've created a roadblock. Okay? Don't, don't go up to somebody to like try to be their friend and be like, Hi, I'm a Christian. What are you? <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> That's what I am. Okay? I, don't want, I don't want to be anywhere near you. <laughs> Why? Because the minute you... Start well. If you start something off like that, they're gonna be like, "Dang it! I've been marked. Target's on my forehead. Now all they want to do is to get me to go to church." Well, no, I just wanted to be your friend. I just wanted to hang out with you. I just wanted to be normal. Okay, Christians can be normal. Okay, please. Be normal. <laughs> we can be normal. Where's the love? Where's the love? So you're real friends with somebody. You're doing it right. You're doing it right. Okay? You're real, you're real with your friends. 
Okay? And they do decide to go to church. Awesome. Awesome. Okay? But this is what happens at most churches. Not here, though. Not here. Okay, well, I'm going to pretend like it's here today. Okay? So they come in, and there's circles of people, just like these sections of chairs. I'm going to walk around a little bit. One reason, because I'm kind of cold. I'll walk around and get some heat. Okay? So they come in. Your front door is over here. So I'm going to go over here. They come in. They walk in the door. They're like, all right. The church. I got a program. I'm not sure what to do with this thing. <laughs> uh, okay, we got a section of chairs here, a section of chairs here, here, here. Where do I go? Where do I sit? Oh, by the way, the sign out front says, everyone welcome. How many of you guys have seen churches with signs that say, everyone welcome? I side note. I just want to do like, a test one day and just go to all those churches. Because I'm not like the normal looking person. Okay? <laughs> I just want to go there and be like, see if it's true. See if, they're, if they really mean that. Well, no, we were just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to go, okay? I just want to, that was just a side note. Okay, so they come in. Okay, well, this, this chair looks good. You go sit down. Getting the stink out of the people. <laughs> Can't be in my circle. Can't be in my section. Darkness. Darkness. Find somewhere else. You go over here. Ah! Whoa. Man, I, I barely even went to the chair. Uh, I'm sitting over here. <laughs> That's good. That means it doesn't happen here. <laughs> Churches were like, I hey, heard your list. 
Better mark them off before you sit next to me. Okay? How about we start letting people belong before they believe? Belong before they believe. People get angry. Well, they might corrupt me. They might stink up my section. <laughs> they might bring me down. You can't have that. Come on, guys. Get real. Let people in your circle. Let them into your circle. How many of you guys have seen the, the Christmas movie, Meet the Parents? Yes. Okay. And it's not really a Christmas movie. <laughs> but it's, we're all unwrapping the classics. And that's fine. So, okay. So this is a clip. I, I want to show a clip from Meet the Parents. Um, because it's going to demonstrate some of my points. It will, I promise. Okay? A couple disclaimers. They say the word marijuana. Marijuana, the word marijuana is not illegal. Just a substance. Everybody take a deep breath. Right? Everybody good? Okay? Also, the main character's name is Gaylord Fokker. F-O-C-K-E-R. Okay? This is a disclaimer because they say his last name in the movie in the clip, and I don't want you to get any wrong ideas. So, everybody handle that? Yeah. Alright, we're going to watch the clip right now. Danny, how's the talks fit? Dad, uh, what's that? Oh, uh, it, it's a sculpture I found in Greg's jacket. This isn't a sculpture, Danny. This is a device for smoking marijuana. Really? trust you, Greg, then I have no choice but to put you right back outside the circle. And once you're out, you're out. There's no coming back. Hmm. Well, I would definitely like to stay inside the circle. Well, then tell me the truth. Okay. Jack, I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, now look, Father. I'm a patient man. That's what 19 months in a Vietnamese prison camp will do to you. But I will be watching you, studying your every move. And if I find that you are trying to corrupt my firstborn child, I will bring you down, baby. I will bring you down to Chinatown. <laughs> I'll be watching you. I will be watching you. Uh, awesome movie. Awesome movie. Now, Jack in the movie, he's an ex CIA guy. So, I mean, father in law scared me anyway, but uh, father in law like that, come on, shake your head. Uh, father in law like that would, no, I'm out. <laughs> now, Jack is talking about his circle of trust, and he's saying the, the gay lord is kind of on the edge. He's not exactly in, and he's not exactly kicked out yet. Okay? Now, Churches do the same thing. We do the same thing. Okay? We have church police. Church police. I'll be watching. I'll be watching. I'll be watching your every move, every move, waiting for you to mess up. To boot you out of the circle of trust. And what did Jack say? Once you're out, you're out. You're out. Okay? If you have church police, fire them. Get them out. Okay? He kicks him out because he doesn't believe exactly what he believes. He's not following Jack's list. Okay? Now, we have our circle of trust. We have a big circle. We have a big circle. Okay? This circle, I feel the first service. I feel like I'm doing the YMCA right now. <laughs> uh, so we have a big circle. Now, this big circle 
is one that anyone and everyone can be in. Anyone and everyone can be in. This is the circle of acceptance. Wherever you're at, in church, out of church, you talk to people, you're nice to people, you're real with people, no matter what. No matter what. If they're old, if they're young, male, female, white, black, yellow, purple, tattooed, pierced, colored hair, sexual preferences, religion, origin, whatever else you can think of. People think of some weird stuff, so whatever else you can think of. Whatever else you can think of. Anybody can be in my circle. Anybody and everybody should be in our circle. Okay. Now, <clears throat> does that mean if you're in my big circle, I just met you, by the way. If you're in my big circle, I'm going to call you up tonight and be like, dude, this is all the sins that I did today. This is where I'm struggling. Uh, give you all my deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> this is what I'm struggling with today. Not a chance. Not a chance. Okay, that's where another circle comes in. The inner circle. The circle of trust. The circle of trust. These are the people that I, I can run to in a time of crisis. These are the people that I know have my back and my best interests in mind. People that help me keep, keep me accountable. Okay, by the way, these are positive people. If you have any negative downers in your circle of trust, get them out. Get them out. Boom. Let's get back to the big circle for the next point. We have this huge circle, ginormous circle, YMCA circle. <laughs> not even, there's not even an O YMCA. Okay? Big circle, big circle. Everyone can be in, except everyone. Everyone, except everyone. All believers should accept everyone. Jesus did. Yeah. He accepted you. He accepted me. He can accept everyone. It didn't matter your background, age, or stage. It doesn't matter. He accepted. Now, what word did I say? Accept. Wait, what was that? Accept. Now, accept or agree. Accept. Accept. We have acceptance, not always agreement. Not always agreement. I may not agree with the way you raise your kids, but you'll be in my circle. You may not agree with the way I raise my kids. Uh, hopefully I'm still in your circle. <laughs> okay? I may not agree with your religion, but you'll be in my circle. You'll be in my circle. I will accept you. I may not agree with your stance on the end times, and nobody can agree on that anyway, but you will be <laughs> in my circle. You'll be in my circle. I may not agree with your sexual preference, but you will be accepted in my circle, and should be accepted in this circle. Okay? I may not agree with whatever it is, even if you say Xmas instead of Christmas. <laughs> You will be accepted in my circle. You should be accepted in this circle. Okay? Now that's whether I'm at church or not. Okay? There shouldn't be a switch at that door in anybody's life. There should not be a switch there. Same here, same there. All the time. All the time. Be the same everywhere. Be the family that people need. Show the love. Show the love. Be the body of Christ. Because that's what God calls us to be. Now, I love to make fun of the body of Christ. <laughs> now, <clears throat> here's why. Okay, everybody's like, why? why? That's not very nice. Okay. Now, the body of Christ is a living, breathing, functioning body. That's the way that it's supposed to be. I don't make fun of that one. I make fun of the body of Christ that churches think they have. But all they have is one ginormous big mouth up here and a bunch of ears. And that's it. That's not even a body of Mr. Potato Head standards. <laughs> it doesn't work for anybody. A mouth and a 
bunch of ears. That's it. It doesn't do anyone any good. All good things flow from relationships. From relationships. Two are better than one. We need to show the love. Show the love. Now we're going to get into your memory verses. It's two. It's two verses. <laughs> you guys can handle it, right? Excuse me. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Let me read it from the NIV. It says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. That's awesome. The God of peace will be with you. Now, we read this verse, and we automatically go to those key words. The, key, the words that I emphasized a little bit. True, noble, right, pure, lovely. Those are awesome words. Those are awesome descriptive words that we should be shown. That we should be. That we should be attracted to. But there's one word in these, set, in these verses that I want you to remember. One word that you need to do. Are you ready? Now, are you ready? I, I, I don't normally warn people when I'm about to say the most profound thing in my message, but I want you to get this. Okay? I want you to get this. It's going to rock your world. It's going to blow your mind. The one thing is, drum roll. I had a good drum roll the first service. Come on, where's my drum roll? <laughs> yeah, okay? The one thing is, whatever. 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 What should you think about doing? Whatever. And the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. There is no step-by-step -step process. There is no formula to remember. We need to take some initiative. We need to be creative. Now, our Creator God created us in His image. So if you are trying to have an excuse of why you're not creative, that's going to blow you away every single time. You are creative. You are creative. Use that creativity. Use it to have tons and tons of people in your big circle. In your big circle. <laughs> Take the chains off of your heart so that it can grow. So you can show the love and be the love that helps others off of Mount Grumpet. Yeah. Help them off. Feel free to fail. Feel free to fail. If you fail, that means you were trying. Okay? Maybe your friend will accept grace. Maybe that person you meet will accept grace. Maybe not. Maybe not. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. A different result. Churches, people come in. Church police catch them doing something wrong. Or... They didn't sit in the right chair or whatever church police get on you for, right? Hey, and they push you out of the circle to teach you a lesson. You probably need to get the hint that those people aren't coming back. Maybe they keep doing it. Expecting people to come back. Expecting people to change what they did and come back. You may be the only love that that person ever encounters. Ever encounters. Learn, adapt, and overcome. But try. Try. Let people belong before they believe. Before they believe. Let them into your big circle. Accept them. You need to live an abundant life so that others see that and want that. 
and then you can help them get there. Every good thing stems from relationships. Real relationships. Not shooting range relationships. Real relationships. Do whatever. Do whatever it takes. I love that I got to bring this during the Christmas holiday. Because that's when people go to church. The priesters. <laughs> the priesters, right? I don't understand it. They feel like they're obligated to go at Christmas. They don't know why. I don't know why. Okay, but that's when they come. When they do, do whatever. Let them into your circle. Let them sit in your section, even if they see. <laughs> Let them sit there. Get to know them. You may have to swallow your pride. Get used to it. And get over it. Okay? Swallow your pride. Who cares what other people think of you? Okay? People might give you some dirty looks when you're showing love and supporting that girl who may have just had an abortion. You may not agree with abortion. But you'll accept her. Accept her. Show her love. Show her support. Do whatever. Showing love and support to your friend who may have just taken a hit or going through withdrawals of drugs. That's not saying you agree with drugs. But you'll accept him. You'll love him. You'll do whatever. Show the love. And your heart, your heart will continue to grow. To grow with the grace that is a free gift from Jesus. And it will overflow in your life. In your life. And that will make it overflow into your big circle. Where you're letting everyone in. Okay? That's the message of grace. You may not feel it sometimes. You may not feel it. Okay? But just like every relationship, do not base things on your feelings. Make the choice. Make the choice to do whatever. To do whatever. And stick to it. Your life. Your life. Now, I'm not talking about them now. I'm talking about you. Your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Which will go into their life. Into the big circle. Okay? People are asking, where's the love? Where's the love? And that, that kind of bothers me. It boggles my mind. The church has been around for a long time. And for people to still be asking, where's the love? Something went wrong. Something went wrong. They should know. They should know that the church is where you can go. But not all churches let you. Not all churches let you. We need to be able to say, it's right here. It's right here. Come on in. Come on in. If you're outside of church, I'm outside of church now. Where's the love? Right here. Come on in. Come into my big circle. I'll show you. I'll be your friend. I'll care for you. I'll support you. People need to start knowing the answer. Where's the love? Where's the love? Okay. Jesus took care of us and is taking care of us so that we can spread his love and acceptance to everyone else in that big circle. Okay, Mount Vernon should be asking, where's the love? They shouldn't be asking that for a, whole, for a long time. They shouldn't be. How many churches are in Mount Vernon? They ask, where's the love? Well, hey, there's that turning point church. I'll go there then. That's a good place to start. Okay. They need to start knowing the answer. But for them to know the answer, we have to show them the answer. Where's the love? It's right here. It's right here. Bow your heads and close your eyes, please. You may be here, and you've never said yes to Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, saying yes to Jesus is the best decision you will ever make in your life. You may have never been loved or accepted in your life, but there is a Heavenly Father who loves and accepts you. All you have to do is say yes. All you have to do.
do the sayings. Now, you will go to heaven. Yes, heaven is awesome. I'm looking forward to it. But I need Jesus right now. And saying yes to Jesus, he'll change your life right now. Right now. So if you're here, you've never said yes to Jesus. Or maybe you have a long time ago, you're away from him, and you want that right now, all you got to do is raise your hand. Anybody at all? Anybody? All right. All right. Now, if you're here, you've said yes to Jesus. Okay? But maybe you've struggled with the acceptance, not always agreement, or letting people belong before they believe. You've struggled with that? You want to change that? You want to make a stand that right now you're going to accept people, you're going to love people no matter what. You're going to let them belong before they believe no matter what. I just want you to raise your hand right now. Yeah. Good. Good. There's a lot of hands raised right now. You guys can put them down. That is the answer that people need. You are now the answer to where to love. And that's in here and outside of here. Father, I thank you that you are our Father. That you love us, that you accept us no matter what. God, that you look, you look through Jesus to look at me. And God, I thank you for this church and the people here who are taking a stand to be the love for this city, for this valley, for whoever they come into contact with. God, give them strength to stand. Give them strength to accept whether they agree or not. And Father, I expect great things from you. I expect an abundant life for this church and for these people. God, we thank you and we love you. And we just pray, God, that you would give us an amazing holiday. God, that we will be the light that people need to bring them to your grace. We thank you for your grace and your mercy each and every day. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Be the love.